Here we go, here we go. A one mile road test in the New Balance Beacons coming right up. But first, we're gonna warm up in the Hoka Clifton 5s. And again, probably in two days, I'm gonna compare the Clifton 5s to the Beacons. It's coming, I know a lot of you are asking about that. And I've got a lot of thoughts between both of the shoes. So stay tuned for that. But first, let's go get a three mile warm up. Three mile, not four, three mile warm up in. And then we're gonna rock and roll. We're gonna rock and roll, baby. One mile time drop, one mile time drop. All right, there we go. Warm up in the books, feeling good, feeling good. All right, the last time I did a one mile time trial was in these Bill Bowerman milers, which this shoe is 10 years old now. Actually, it's probably more like 11 or 12. It's getting up there, but it still works. And so I did this the last time trial on a track. Actually, let's take a peek, come on. failed to mention that my goal was to break five minutes that was four so I think I did that mile in July I actually don't even remember I believe it was about a 450 ish on my time maybe 448 so today I'm not gonna do it on the track because I'm listening to you in the comments and I'm reading your comments and they're coming in it's just a little too windy to talk to you guys out here right now so I'm just gonna put the beacons on and get this done beacon one mile road test basically all out. Let's see what they can do. I'm curious to see how they perform at higher speeds because some of you are commenting about how you're using this shoe for track workouts and even some of you are using this shoe for half marathon, 10k, even marathon races. I'm I'm blown away and I'm excited to give this guy a test. By the way, this comment is coming up from Suzanne. She's fast. She's over she's well, she's over the age of 50 and she's fast. And basically Suzanne, just so you know, you are you're lighting a fire underneath me. If you can run, and I'm not going to tell you the times yet. If you can run this fast over the age of 50, Suzanne, like wow. You wait till you hear this time. But first, let's get this guy into books. Come on. sun came out taking the arm warmers off for sure got a little hot out not hot but just warm it was cool on the warm-up but now I'm warm after the warm-up I got 4.53 on the watch, 4.53. Oh man, oh, that hurt. 
Oh man, I gotta do some more speed work. I gotta do some more speed work. All right, my watch says 453. 453 in the New Balance Beacons. I got a lot of thoughts about how these shoes performed at higher speeds. Wait, I'm not gonna tell you right now though. We'll do that back at the house. But I just gotta say, Suzanne, you inspired me today. Listen to this comment from Suzanne from, two, I think yesterday she posted this in the video upper right hand corner where I asked the question of the day, what is your one mile PR? And she said this, Independence Day Main Street Mile 534 for one mile at the age of 53 in 2016. Then she did the Fifth Avenue mile. She ran a 535 in 2017. Both road miles, point to point, no turns. Didn't run the mile distance until age 50. Suzanne, what? If I can run a 535 when I'm 50, I'm gonna be incredibly happy. Incred Congratulations, Suzanne, that's amazing. Anyway, I just had to communicate that to you guys. Like, keep dreaming, keep fighting. Suzanne, you're blowing my mind. You're blowing my mind. Like, that's just out of control. Okay, let's get back to the house. We're gonna break down how the New Balance Beacons did at higher speed. And, oh my goodness, feeling burn. And Suzanne, you're inspiring me. You're inspiring me. We're back. We're back at the house. All right, we are in my shed. This is my shed, and it's a little chilly out here. So yes, I'm putting my arm warmers back on. Thank you, Zensa, for these arm warmers. Uh, I'm going to show you the shed and just to prove to you guys that, yes, this is my shed. I'm slowly converting it to a little recording studio for you guys. It's a, it's a work in progress, but uh, like all of my shovels and rakes and snow shovels are hanging right there. My sprinkler system box is right there. Anyway, I'll show it to you in a second. Stay tuned. But it's a little chilly out here. I do have a heater. Uh, but anyway, that's why I'm putting, putting my arm warmers back on. All right, here we go. The New Balance Beacon. How did it perform? Ouch, the heater's a little hot. Hold on. Okay, we're good. Whew, little toasty down there. All right, how did the New Balance Beacon perform at higher speeds? And again, I believe, and I said this a couple days ago, that I will use this shoe for three to eight mile recovery days, easy days. But so many of you have been commenting over the last really two to three weeks since I got this shoe that you are using this for track workouts, for tempo runs, and even for racing. I, somebody, a couple people commented they've worn this shoe for a marathon race, which is amazing. I don't think I will be doing that anytime soon. Let me explain. First of all, putting the shoe on my foot on the side of the road there, I felt as though I was able to lock my foot down pretty well with the lacing system. However, it is a knit upper, therefore I think it has quite a bit of flexibility in the upper, but I was cinching down the laces pretty good to get that lockdown feel for the higher speeds at the one mile distance. The only issue with locking down my foot in the shoe was the toe box. Because obviously there's no laces over the toe box, I felt as though my foot was not really locked down in the toe box. Anyway, so as I was running, I could feel my toes a little loosey-goosey. But that's not the major issue with wearing the New Balance Beacon at high speeds. The major issue is that the shoe is too flexible. It's too flexible. All right, I don't want to fully bend it because that'll break the foam, the fresh foam down a little bit too much. But you can see, like, it's really, really flexible. Therefore, I would not recommend wearing this shoe in a race or in a workout, uh, maybe in a tempo run. Actually, you know what? I think in a tempo run, this would be okay. So you want a little more rigidity in your shoes when you are going at high speeds, in my humble opinion, because it's you're, you're gonna be losing energy when your foot is pushing on. See, look at that. Look at that flex. Can you see that? I'll get a close up here in a second. And so that flex, you have to make up for that push off uh, in your calf muscles, in your soleus, in your foot muscles, everything, when your shoe has that much flexibility. And frankly, I'm pretty pleased with how the shoe performed at sub five minute pace. It wasn't bad, 
but you can do better. All I'm saying is you can do better. I think if I would have been wearing, let's say the turbo today, I bet I would have been able to run 448, like five seconds faster, just because of the shoe has a little more rigidity to it. And now this is not the question of the day, but I am curious if you do use the beacon for, let's say faster workouts or even maybe race day, let me know. And I'll just be curious to hear your opinion on how it performs for higher speeds for you. Okay. We're changing gears just a little bit, uh, even though today's video is about the beacon a lot. Suzanne, you got me thinking. You got me thinking about a lot of things, and I hope uh, this question of the day can get you guys thinking about, yes, the future, or, or maybe the past. Okay, here we go. The keyword is the number 50. And the question of the day, when you, and listen, I know there's teenagers watching these videos, I know there's 60-year-olds uh, watching these videos, and I, I know that because you, you tell me in the comments. If you are younger than 50, what is your goal for your running experience when you turn 50? And I know this is a big kind of 30,000-foot question, but I just want to reflect. And again, Suzanne, you just got me thinking on, wow, where do I want to be when I'm 50 years old? Do I want to be running, you know, 453 in a New Balance Beacon when I'm 50 years old? Heck yeah, I would love that. And if you are over the age of 50, if you feel comfortable, if you feel comfortable, maybe you could share a little wisdom with all of us who are under 50 with your, what your experience has been as a, as, an, as a runner who, yeah, is maybe getting just a little older. We all, it happens. This is life. As my uncle likes to say, time waits for no man, right? Time waits, like life moves on. So if you're over 50, maybe you could share a little bit of advice, a little bit of your experience of being a runner uh, over the age of 50 and what that's like. And like, what are you experiencing now? Um, you know, whether it's health related, whether it's racing related, whether it's training, whether it's mental, all of that would be amazing. And of course, we'll get the discussion going down in the comments. Woo, woo. All right, are you ready for are you ready for the review? It's just like random things. It's it's it, it looks like a shed, but it's not quite a shed. You might be a little shocked by this. This is a little behind the scenes. I'm excited to show you. Here we go. Taking the camera off the tripod. Ooh. Ready? Ready? You know this you know this corner, but how about everything else? <laughs> There's the shed. I told you it was a shed. I told you it was a shed. Oh my goodness, just stuff everywhere. Camping stuff, yard work stuff, all this good stuff, crazy. There you go folks there you go just a little teeny tiny bit of home maintenance on the body can go a long ways for staying injury free and yes 2019 it is just around the corner and so that's a great goal for the new year is to stay injury free as runners we can struggle with that we can i do you know i, I know i do pf but it is getting better it is getting better all right guys that is it gotta go to bed gotta go to bed see beauty work hard love each other see you tomorrow see you tomorrow right here we'll be here we'll be here